another person um, giving me most of their numbers or some things that are blank. I don't know. I'm assuming uh, as it relates to their student loan that it is on deferred payments. Most people have them on deferred at the moment. Uh, so I'm not going to hold that against them. Don't know what the interest rate is, but that's okay. Um, also, person does not have a debt tool at the moment, according to the spreadsheet. They did show uh, this is another person that also um, has a bank account or a savings account with Hartford Federal Credit Union. So we could skip over the me showing you the bank again. We already, you know, kind of did that. Uh, but this is really cool. This is their numbers, four major numbers, cash flowing a thousand, making just under four, total debt just under 200K. Got two, these two credit cards here. Got a timeshare. This is a loan, student loan, mortgage debt, payment, 3% rate, value is 308,000. They got 26,000 plus cash on hand. Opportunity I see here again, potentially considering a first lien HELOC. All right, they could go with that bank. I gave you guys uh, last week another service, a bank called First Savings Bank. I, I dropped the link last time. I can do it again on this call for you all, but it's it's on my website. It's on every video in the uh, description of every video I put out. So it's it's there, very accessible. Uh, what, what I do like about that bank in particular, and um, I'm actually going to drop a video where I interviewed an individual that works at that particular bank and how they're helping a good amount of my clients um, get a first lien HELOC. I'm just gonna blow this up just so you guys can see this particular video. It's like two two hours, 20 minutes long. We went very, very deep into it. Name of the, name of the bank is First Savings Bank. For those that are like, okay, I don't bank with Hartford. Uh, where do I go, Denzel? Uh, this could be an option. This bank services everywhere except for Texas, Maryland, Alaska, and Hawaii, as you see on the top right there. Um, and I just kind of broke down the HELOCs cost, the fees, requirements, things like that. So this is a great, great resource, great video to watch uh, to really fully understand, comprehend First Lean HELOCs and this one in particular. So I'm going to put that in the chat for you guys. Let me just do that real quick so I don't forget. First Lean HELOC resource. Boom. That video is not public on my YouTube channel just yet. I've been editing that one and I've been trying to coordinate with their entire team. I'm actually trying to interview pretty much everybody on their entire team and then I was going to drop a little series on my YouTube channel regarding that specific tool. But again, that's one of many different HELOCs in the marketplace. Um, it's all a matter of, like I said, reading between the lines, doing the homework, all that good stuff. For this particular case study, let's just say that they, uh, because they already bank, already have a relationship, they've got 20 plus thousand sitting in that bank. I'm assuming they've been building that for a period of time. If I'm only making $3,800 uh, a month, pretty sure they've been banking at this bank for quite some time. So if that's true, we got Hartford Federal Credit Union, First Lean HELOC. We know that that particular bank does up to 80% LTV. So 308, eh, 300 grand, call it. Around 240 is the max that they would lend this person according to their uh, value of the home. So let's just say they got approved for the max. Cool. First thing that happens, I'll owe 137, 34, move three to 5.5%. We know three is actually higher than five. Five is lower than three. As it relates to what we actually pay, I can get that rate much lower, right? We look at cash flow, times that by, by 12. We look at the 240 times two thirds. This would be the, say, generally speaking, the highest I go, right? Anywhere from 12 to 158, chunk range. Okay, cool. Now, typically when I see people with lower income numbers. I I do get a little, uh, pay, I pay very close attention to, to leverage. When there's higher income, there's more volume coming in and out of the line, which means better manipulation on the rate itself. The, the lower the income I have, the harder it is to actually offset a big balance, right? As it relates to their income, if I had a smaller line, say a 20,000 or whatever, 15, 25, then it would be easier with a lower income. So when I'm looking at people's income in the twos and the threes and the fours, 
right? I do pay close attention to that. Now, there is an opportunity just like the last case study with the uh, cash on hand. If they come to the conclusion, yes, my money isn't doing anything in the savings account, isn't earning me anything, it's devaluating according to inflation and taxation, right? Money's worthless anyway. I could reposition this money in here to, to dramatically affect what I actually pay in interest, right? Also understanding that this 131287, once it gets refinanced, becomes cash flow, becomes an amount that stays in the line itself. So again, that 284434, right? 1312 of it was was coming out versus with a first lien HELOC, it's no longer coming out. It 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 just stays, right? Every time the paycheck lands, it just stays low as a rate. So what's actually coming out is whatever the person's expenses are, these other debt payments and whatever other living expenses that they have. Again, won't even factor that in, overestimating just to show how how powerful it is, even when you don't factor in everything, right? So I'm, I'm being quick here. So let's say we did that minus the cash on hand that they have. It's at the same bank, right? What's the difference, right? Th this money is at HFCU. Get a first lien, it, it, same bank, nothing changed. That's what I like too. So minus, now we're at 111.070 and 34 cent, max chunk 158. Let's look at that. So this is say the max I'll go of what I will chunk at. In addition to getting rid of that whole entire first lien mortgage, again, no cost if this person, right, according to that bank, no application fees, no penalty, no origination, no appraisal fee, it says no application fees, right? Even when they say that, still read the lines, right? Still read the terms and agreements. Don't overlook it. Just keep, keep looking at that because these banks, they try to, they try to finesse and finagle. I don't trust them as far as I can throw them, right? You've heard that line. So I have that same attitude. I'm cool with you, but I'm, I see what they're doing. I see the plans, not buying it. I want to be my own bank one day. And that's very possible within the breaking chains community. Imagine if there's a BCE, a BCE credit union. Oh, Lord. <laughs> come on. A BCE credit union. Only way to get in. You got to break your chains. We only accept free folk in here or people who want and seek to be free, who want and need to be helped. Like they, they need financial freedom. They walk into that bank. Hey, how you doing? King, how you doing? Queen, welcome to BCE Credit Union, where we help people become financially free. That's a slogan. I don't know. Let me, let me come back to numbers. I get all excited because I start thinking big, right? And that's what we need to do in this house. Start thinking big, folks. Big. It's exciting. Anyways, looking at this case study, coming back, coming back, coming back. 111, 070, 34 is what the balance went down to. Max chunk amount being 47 and some change. What could we get rid of? I'm looking. I don't know what the interest rate is. They didn't put that on there. Um, so I will ignore that. It's such a low payment. But I am very interested in this credit card, that credit. So 10.4, 24.4, and this 14%. What could I get with that? So 28 30, 68 plus 5,000, 33473 and 13,973 95. Say we just stop there. Just chunk that. Till we get more data, we probably could throw that in there if the rate is, you know, pretty high. If it's at zero, we're going to ignore it. This is at zero. No payments. No payments at zero more than likely. We ignore it. Till it kicks back in, then we'll address it with the debt tool. Until then, we're going to maximize what we've chunked. Right? We always we want to make sure, yeah, it's a, it's a great rate. We know we're going to ma manipulate that. We also want to make sure we're actually paying off what we move, right? That's that's key. So let's say that's the, the chunk and the cash flow gain would be the 57 bucks, the 156 and the 236.97. So not bad. 449.97, so nearly $1,500 in total cash flow. So we add the balance that I went down to, add that chunk, 22, 36. Here's where I will likely be at. And we know good and well that because this person doesn't actually have a debt tool yet, it might take 30, 60 plus days just to get the HELOC, right? There's an application process. There's a screening process. There's a evaluation process. There is a pregame process. The, the client needs to know what they're doing. So they need to study, just like Pearl said, a lot of discipline, a lot of, you know, watch Denzel's videos. Any one of my clients will tell you, just watch his videos, watch his videos, watch the scenarios, 
right? Commit the time, study, get to know your bank, build a relationship with the loan officer who handles that department of home equity line of credit. Get to the source, right? And, and extract as much as you can. That helps us move forward very effectively. So 133-209-70 is the is is say the highest balance that it'll be but we know good and well that we just start doing that snowball in two months this gets wiped out nearly right so that number we down and then you're paying the monthly payments for say two months three months four months however long it takes to obtain the debt tool so we already in overestimated numbers here 133 209 70 is what it goes to take that 28 4, 4, 3, 4 minus 449 so new expense number so income goes in expenses come out and we know we didn't factor that in right so this would be an interest only payment let's take that 133 number 209 times that by five and a half percent this is what we would pay in a year if we just made interest only payments right but that's not what we're doing i'm just showing you this is what would only be required so that means we would go from 1312.87 minus $610.54. So, so technically you need a minus 702.33 because that's no longer coming out of the line of credit. This is what the line of credit is charging. So that does get pulled from the balance itself. So it'll just add to your balance. That's the cool thing about HELOCs is when it says, hey, on the due date, first of the month, fifth of the month, whatever it is, since you owe 610, right? Let's just say that was the interest for one month, 600 bucks. That will come from the balance of the HELOC. So it's not like I have to pay $610. Why? I already paid it each and every, I already paid it in advance. So when the due date hits, whatever interest was owed for the time that I was doing velocity banking, it, it simply just, it just pull it from the balance of the equity in the line of credit itself. That's, that's what's really cool here, right? So technically, and we didn't do this in the last case study, but I figured I'd try to do it here. It, it may not be as accurate because I'm not sure if taxes, insurance, and other stuff is, is included in here, right? So just do the 2394.37 minus 702.33. So technically, this is what their expenses are, somewhere around that number. So you see how this becomes all principal now. Whereas before it was principal, interest, taxes, insurance, right? Whereas now it, it all becomes principal because when I pay into a first lien HELOC, right? When I pay into it, it's an interest only payment. So therefore interest should only get charged like on the due date. It'll, it'll add it up, boom, on the due date, that's what you owe. But before that, when money goes in, it's principal each and every time going into it. Now, not all HELOCs are treated equal. So this is where you'll ask these very critique questions when you're talking to the bank before you get your HELOC. You see with first lien HELOC, that service and that video that I uh, uh, dropped earlier and, and you'll see the link, their particular first lien HELOC, we mentioned this last week, that any time money goes in before the due date, it's principal first, which uh, affects the actual interest on the due date when it's owed, right? So the due date is out there, right? Way out there. Meanwhile, upon obtaining the HELOC, your first payment is what? Usually 30 days later, right? 25, 30 days later. Well, in that time, what are we doing? We're dumping all our income in. So it's principal first. Some HELOCs are principal and interest. So when you make a payment, boom, it charges the interest right then and there, which is fine. It's basically the same thing because they're both calculated simple interest. It's just one is requiring only interest only payments on the due date, while the other is requiring a principal and interest payment on the due date. That is the only difference, but they're both being calculated the same interest. You're gonna be same, doing the same concept. Money goes in first, right? Income goes in, expenses come out. In this case, since we went from a first lien mortgage amortized monthly payment to now a variable rate first lien HELOC, that's the difference, right? So what's actually coming out of the HELOC would be these other expenses, right? Well, now we know that if we just did those three, well, those are gone. Those three are gone. We didn't have all the data here. We could probably throw it in if it's a, you know, a high enough rate and just get that 8191 and what's a couple extra grand not a killer and then we'll leave that alone leave that student alone until it comes in 
if this is at zero percent leave it alone until the interest rate come right before it kicks in move it into the line right and just keep it going then i would tell this person hey what can we do to get this up right you got the strategy down great this is basically on automatic all you need to know is money goes into the heloc and expenses come out when they are due you pick one of these credit cards or if you have another credit card your favorite one highest cashback rewards and you use that to run all your bills to help offset this number we're reducing that number as close to zero as possible right at that point it's fully automated money goes in money comes out money goes in money comes out you can set up direct deposits with a first lien heloc they give you checks they give you the ability to transfer money in and out between different accounts you may receive a debit card credit card where you can you know swipe pay any type of expense right um what i tell my clients is okay you you list out all the bills that can be paid with a credit card and you would set up auto pay on that credit card write it out switch my, switch my marker here because i think it was dying all right so bills with credit card line them up lay it all out on the spreadsheet that i sent you all you put a y or an n y means yes can be paid with a credit card no means no can't be paid with a credit card list it all out you'll see that final total number and you say okay great it's from this 1692 let's just lowball it say uh, a good 900 bucks this person can run through a credit card get two percent cashback rewards let's say 18 dollars. okay cool then on the credit card itself you set up auto pay right set up auto pay from the heloc this way that's automated this way you only pull money out at the exact point in time that money needs to be pulled out which means you're keeping your income in the heloc for as long as humanly possible that's the goal you want to keep money in for as long as possible manipulating that rate below what they told you they gave it to you at so auto pay from the heloc the statement balance not the monthly minimum payment we don't want to pay any interest here right but the statement balance not the total balance because of this 900 dollars on the due date the statement balance might say hey you only owe us 450 for the month of august or september okay so you only pay the 450 because the other three four five hundred dollars or whatever it is is not charging you any interest so let that bill or bills float an extra 30 days or so and you just keep doing it over and over again month to month the only money that's coming out of the heloc at this point in time would be any expense that can't be paid with a credit card right anything that cannot be paid with a credit card taxes and insurance right um water bill gas bill maybe whatever cannot be paid with a credit card pull it out of the heloc to the checking account checking account pays the bill right some first he helocs allow you to pay your bills right from the heloc so you never really are taking money out it's like on auto and and so you're you're killing it at this point right all money is being used very effectively so if we were to use that number income goes in 3868 actual net money expense coming out is 1692.04 we can see how we can absolutely bring that 5.5 to like four three less than three and then i would say hey how do we get this money up how many how many people can we talk to uh to bring them to bce uh to receive the affiliate commissions right why, why are we playing games there's a lot of money to be made right so let's let's not play games let's not play with our time let's talk about how awesome bce is get people enrolled right do the presentation show the presentation show the presentation you, you know this is discipleship you just keep doing it over and over again go out two by two keep doing it bum, 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 bum. and then figure out what are my skills gifts and talents what is, what is god's will for my life and how can i move forward what is god's will for my life and how do i monetize that into a business to go from you know 3800 a month and just add a zero move the debt move the comma to the right is that such a problem that's, that's, that's not impossible to do right and even if you fail miserably and only double up well now you're making double right plus six grand not bad not bad this case is done that's the strategy go do the work make it happen talk to the bank make the relationship i want to see people moving in this community i want to see people moving they're like denzel i want to see the emails coming in denzel i did what you said da 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 mm-hmm mm-hmm yep 
like i feel taller than zell yep wife wife said it it must be true it must be true right you showed her the the title to the car it's done right or wife you talk to husband he says hey <laughs> did you lose some weight what's going on i don't know like it's exciting stuff starts getting paid off you feel lighter right shoulders come out better posture right i don't know you start walking different things just seem different why you just broke some chains oh my goodness you just broke some chains right this stuff this stuff is powerful man we, we go into this my goodness